To be honest, I kind of hate short stories. I think they're less satisfying to read and have less interesting things to say than novels. But these 10 short stories have made me reconsider that position. So when I signed up for all of these English classes at Stanford, I didn't expect to read so many short stories because back in high school, whenever we took an English class, we would pretty much only read novels. But apparently short stories are vital to the English curriculum at Stanford. So I was forced to read a bunch of them this year. And of like the 20 or 30-ish I probably read, these 10 are definitely my favorite. If I can, I'll try to find links to the short stories online and I'll try to link them down below. Also, this list is in no particular order. The first story is The Story of Your Life by Ted Chiang. By far and away, this is probably my favorite of all of the short stories I've read. This sci-fi short story revolves around a field linguist who is hired by the government in order to learn the writing and language system of aliens that have come to Earth. As she learns this alien language, which is fundamentally different than human language, the way that she sees and experiences the world is also fundamentally changed. And as an aspiring writer, reading about how language can fundamentally change the way that we view the world is just poetic. The story is told in a non-chronological order and interspersed throughout the story is memories that the main character has of her and her now deceased daughter. And this short story is what the movie Arrival is based off of. And as someone whose favorite genre is definitely not sci-fi, there's still a bunch of sci-fi elements in here that I really, really appreciated. For example, I think I remember I remember Neil deGrasse Tyson saying in one interview that a lot of the ways that we imagine aliens are honestly really unoriginal. A lot of them are bipedal, a lot of them have arms and legs, a lot of them have eyes. Like just a lot of the aliens that we tend to imagine in sci-fi tend to be really anthropomorphic. Like they seem to resemble humans in a lot of really important ways. But the aliens that are in this story are actually so incredibly unique. Everything from their bodies to their language to how they fundamentally experience the world is just so interesting to me. Also, the inclusion of linguistic theory and laws of physics make this story seem really grounded in reality. Even though it's sci-fi, it makes it feel like it could really feasibly happen. And I really appreciated that, but take that with a grain of salt because I literally know nothing about linguistic theory or the laws of physics. The second story I wanted to talk about today is Goodbye Columbus by Philip Roth. Honestly, this is more like a novella than a short story. It's rather long for a short story. I had to read this for class and I just enjoyed it because I think it's a really solid coming of age story. The story revolves around a middle slash lower middle class Jewish boy named Neil who falls in love with and starts dating a rich Jewish girl named Brenda. The book tackles themes of like socioeconomic class, the dark side of love and possessiveness, and just the call of suburban life. Being someone who's around the age of these characters and still struggling to find my own way, I thought this story was just a really solid coming of age short story. The third story I wanted to talk about was Sunny Blues by James Baldwin. The story revolves around two brothers. The younger brother, Sonny, is arrested for using and selling heroin. And the story is told through the perspective of the older brother as he recounts his own life and his experiences with Sonny. How Sonny was growing up, his reaction to Sonny getting arrested, and who Sonny is now that he's out of prison. Once Sonny is released, he and his brother have conversations about Sonny's experience in prison and how that changed him and who he is now. So when I read the story, I also read it as a coming of age story, despite both of these characters being full-fledged adults by the time the story starts. It's a story about how to deal with the darkness and inevitable suffering of life. Like what do we do in the face of suffering and how does that suffering change us? I don't think there's anything more coming of age than learning how to deal with suffering. Because when we come of age, it's when we stop being completely sheltered from the world and the harsh realities of life. This is something that the story tackles really well because the characters in the story are no strangers to suffering. Sunny is a former drug addict who has been to prison and the main character has lost his own daughter. Their lives are just so ripe with suffering and that makes the question of how to deal with suffering seem so much more real to them. So I actually had to write like a short mini essay about the story for one of my classes. And I've always just found that like the more I pay attention to stories, whether they be books, anime, or short stories, I've always enjoyed them more. And thinking more critically about this short story has definitely helped me enjoy it a lot more. I don't know if my take or analysis on the short story is perfect or definitely like the best take, but it was good enough to give me an A on the paper. So if you wanna read it, it'll just be down in the description below. Fourth short story I wanted to talk about today is Playing Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain by Jamil John Kochak. This story revolves around a teenage boy who really struggles to connect with his father who is an immigrant from Afghanistan. The father is a war veteran who lost his brother to the Soviets during the war, and the main character connects with his father through playing Metal Gear Solid V. During the game which takes place in Afghanistan, the main character imagines his father and brother as characters in the game, and he imagines himself going to save both his father and uncle. But in the process he ignores his family in real life. I love this story because I can relate to it on a lot of different levels. The main character is this teenage boy who struggles to feel understood by his family. He's Muslim, but he smokes weed and plays a lot of video games. There's just such a large generational gap between the life that he has experienced and the life that his father has experienced that make it so hard for them to communicate. 
While it's really clear to me that the boy loves his father and the father loves his son, there's just too many emotions and barriers to communication that get in the way of them seeing eye to eye. It's really heartwarming because you know that deep down they both really love each other, but it's also equally frustrating because they always seem to miss each other and miscommunicate. It's a story that just really, really hit home for me. The fifth story I want to talk about today is They Told Us Not To Say This by Jen Alendi Trahan. This is a short story about girls who grow up in Vallejo, California, a rather poor area, and grow up idolizing this high school basketball player that goes to their school named Brent Zaleski. Brent introduces her and her friends to famous athletes and even a famous Filipino woman singer. And being introduced to all these famous people and hearing their inspiring stories, especially the female singer, makes them inspired to ask for more out of life. This is a classic coming of age story that revolves around gender, social class, and breaking out of the expectations that have been laid upon you by an older generation. It was honestly a really inspiring read because these girls in the story have kind of been put down and put in their place their entire lives, but you see them break out of that and start to ask for more out of life than the things that they've been given. The author of this short story was actually one of my English teachers, though we read this short story in a class that was not hers. And while I may be biased, I genuinely think that the story is just a really good read and honestly really inspiring. And it's by far the shortest of all the short stories on this list. The sixth short story I wanted to talk about today is Drinking Coffee Elsewhere by ZZ Packer. This short story is about a black girl named Dina who goes to Yale and meets this white girl named Heidi. Dina has a lot of emotional baggage. She's developed different coping mechanisms that have allowed her to deal with the death of her mother, being a closeted lesbian, growing up as a black person surrounded by white people. The primary coping mechanisms that she uses is being overly cynical, pushing other people away and lying to herself and others. There are two main reasons I genuinely just love this story. First is the brutal and honest portrayal of how hard it can be to unlearn some of the coping mechanisms that we have learned that have helped us get this far. Dina pushes people away, especially the people who care about her. And on the surface, she can just seem like a complete jerk. But if you consider all of the things that she's been through and the things that she has learned and told herself in order to deal with them, she doesn't just get through these things really easily. They take time, effort, and a lot of vulnerability in order to grow and let go of the things that have protected you in the past. And not everyone is always willing and able to do these things. And I think that the way this is portrayed in the story seems really authentic. Second, I love how sarcastic and cynical her point of view on life is. I think it is just the funniest thing to read. And I always love characters that are overly cynical and honestly just really mean. Like the tone is set from the very first paragraph of the story. Orientation games began the day I arrived at Yale from Baltimore. In my group, we played heady, frustrating games for smart people. One game appeared to be charades reinterpreted by existentialists. Another involved listening to rocks. Like I feel like there's just so much sass and sarcasm in this writing and I loved her personal voice. I thought it was so fun to read. The seventh short story I wanted to talk about today is Love and Honor and Pride and Compassion and Sacrifice by Nam Lee. This story resonated with me on a really similar level to the Metal Gear Solid 5 story. It's a story about a writer who's writing a eulogy for his father and in the process he's recalling their really tumultuous relationship. Throughout his entire life, the main character's perception of his father has been colored by the fact that his father is a survivor of the My Lai massacre in Vietnam. And the story mainly centers around a time period where his father comes to visit him while he is also looking for inspiration for his next story for his writing workshop. Like the Metal Gear Solid story, this is a story about miscommunication, familial love, and how much can be missed between two generations of family that do love each other. Uh, this feels honestly even more tailored to me because my parents are from Vietnam. And look, I just have like a really soft spot for familial stories and the struggles of familial love. Anyways, this story just asks some really good questions. Like the main character's father was definitely not the best father ever, but given what the father had to experience and how that experience shaped him, how much of that can we forgive him for? Also, this story gets really meta at one point because the main character and his writer friend start having this conversation about ethnic stories. They talk about how ethnic stories are kind of like this big fad right now and they're kind of just a money grab and they sell really well. And this really brings up the question of like what stories really need to be told and whose right is it to tell and profit from these stories. The story just felt so real in the way that it juggled all of the problems in the main character's life. He clearly was still trying to figure out his own life and what he wanted while still trying to find inspiration for his writing while also working at understanding and repairing his relationship with his father. The eighth short story I wanted to talk about today is The 400 Pound CEO by George Saunders. This is a short story about a really obese man that works for this company that claims that they will take the raccoons from people's homes or neighborhoods and set them free in the wild where they will have a better life. When in reality, they actually just kill all of the raccoons that they capture. The narrator, this obese man, is treated horribly by pretty much every single person in his life, and he is constantly humiliated by the people that he works with, despite being a well-meaning and overall relatively genuine guy. 
For me, the story just really embodies the injustice and unfairness of life. And I think it criticizes this idea that we all have that good things always happen to good people. Personally, I felt a lot of sympathy for the main character because he just wanted to feel loved and connected in companionship, things that we literally all want, but just the people around him treat him so horrible. He's definitely not the perfect person, but the way that he's portrayed makes me genuinely feel a lot of sympathy for him. And then he's contrasted with the CEO who works at his company, who's honestly just a complete a-hole, but everyone absolutely absolutely adores him for some reason. This story is honestly probably the opposite of a feels good story, but it does a really good job of capturing this idea that I generally have about the world, which is bad things happen to good people all the time for no divine or cosmological purpose, and that the world can just be cruel and unfair. <laughs> Great. The ninth short story I wanted to talk about today is The Finkelstein Five by Nana Kwame Ajay Branya. This is easily one of the most haunting stories that I've read all year. In the story, there's a recent court case called The Finkelstein Five about a white man who uses a chainsaw to cut off the heads of five black children near a public library in order to quote unquote defend his children. He was deemed as innocent and in response, black civilians have started dressing up in fancy attire and going out and murdering white people. And as they go out and commit these acts of retaliation, they yell the names of the five deceased black children. The story that revolves around being black in America and how your blackness can affect how other people treat you and how that can affect the way you see yourself and carry yourself. The story came out four years ago and it's near impossible to read the story without thinking about the BLM movement and the riots that happened a couple years ago. I'm trying to find words to talk about how I felt about the story in a really elegant way, but I don't think there are any. The story is an intense ride from the beginning and it just left me feeling deeply uncomfortable and mad. This story is a must read because it just brings up so many good questions about race. The last short story on my list is The Human Snowball by Davey Rothbard. This is honestly a really nice story to end on. This is about a guy that goes to Buffalo, New York because on New Year's, he kissed a girl in Michigan at a New Year's party and he's had a crush on her ever since. Valentine's Day is approaching, so he decides to drive up to Buffalo, New York to surprise her at her workplace. On the way to meeting her, he meets this entire cast of different and eccentric characters. He meets his friend who is a car thief, a 110 year old man, a landlord, and many, many more people. Like the title indicates, this single event of him going to Buffalo, New York to meet this girl sets off an entire cascade of events that all continuously build on top of each other. And it is so entertaining to watch this entire cast of characters constantly interact with each other and just all of the random and serendipitous things that happen to these characters. This is a story that perfectly captures the spontaneity and serendipity of life and how we can have these really fun and blissful moments seemingly out of nowhere or by pure chance. None of their lives are perfect or end up as perfect, but no matter what, nothing can take away the single night that they all shared together. And also, I'm pretty sure that this story is nonfiction, which makes it even better because the idea that all of these events actually happened to someone makes me feel really warm. Those were my 10 favorite short stories I read during my first year at Stanford. And honestly, at this rate, I'm sure I will be reading many, many more.